Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to day 10 of the Aurora AKT 30 day challenge. We're a third of the way through these videos now. Thank you for all the kind comments, and feedback and messages that you've been giving me. I'm really, really glad that these are helping you. If it's your very first one, then welcome. Every single day leading up to your AKT, we are doing a live question in real time to get you used to both the timings that you get on approximation per each question that you have, just to get it into you as to how quickly you have to think, but looking at some knowledge-based um, bits that we often get asked about when it comes to AKT uh, and also some technique things as well. So today's another stats question. So I'm not sure if you started stats or not yet. Um, let me know if you have, if you haven't, when you plan to start it, how you plan to prepare, uh, put some comments in the chat box below. So without further ado, I'm going to give you 57 seconds. I'm going to start the timer and let's see how you do with this one. Nice time, guys. Um, so if you've been sitting there blankly for the last 57 seconds because you haven't done any stats yet and you're not sure what any of this is all about, then good, that's why you're here. And hopefully you're going to walk away from this video being confident about forest plots because um, forest plots really, well, for a while when I started reading about forest plots, when it, I did my own AKT, I really struggled. I didn't get them. I just, I tried to read them. I, I tried to do loads of questions behind it. And one of the things we talk about with stats a lot is if you just go and do a whole bunch of questions, you will understand probably how to answer those questions that you've done. But when that question comes in a different style or a different format, then it can throw you, especially if um, you're under time pressure and adrenaline is pumping in the real thing. So when we teach stats, we teach a lot of principle-based stats. So we go to the beginning and look at some baselines, get those bit right, the fundamentals right, and then you can start to trust yourself to work out other formats um, of question based on the principles that you've got. If you learn it the other way around, so you learn the top end and then learn down, then your base is not as solid as it can be and that's when it can get quite challenging. When, for example, you see another graph that you've not seen before, but actually it's just another variation of one of the other graphs that you might know about already. Or a simpler graph that you, if we'd understood the principles of, then you would be able to work out the higher graph. So remember, you can never ever see every type of graph out there but you can understand four or five probably, maybe six core types of graph that all of those are based based around. So let's look at forest plots then because there are lots of variations of these. But forest plots are basically a way of looking at um, a meta-analysis in graphical format. So what's a meta-analysis? It's a, um, a collection or a look at a number of different studies focusing on the same thing, but adding all the data together and coming out with a um, a bigger or more powerful outcome in terms of research because you've got numbers and stats involved. So you're asked to review a meta-analysis which assesses several trials on a new drug designed to reduce blood pressure. Which of the following options is incorrectly matched? So the first thing to notice here is incorrectly matched. So again, we talk a lot about how quickly and how easy it is to get things the wrong way around in the question. Um, we did our live course a couple of days ago and people were losing marks left, right and center because they weren't picking up things like correct, incorrect, not correct or those kind of things. So incorrectly matched, the answer is D. So well done if you got D. Let me know if you got D. Let me know if you guessed D. Um, and let me know if you understood it from the beginning. So why um, is D the correct answer? We'll come back to this in a second. But I want to go through some of the core principles um, of forest plots then. So when you look at a forest plot, you'll see 
uh, a number of boxes and a diamond. And we'll go through what both these mean in a second. But as you can see here, you've got change in blood pressure. So you've got zero, so no impact on blood pressure at all. Blood pressure goes up, um, blood pressure goes down 10, 20, 30, 40. So th this should say systolic blood pressure. Um, and then you've got the studies. So study one, two, three, four. So the first thing you look at in a forest plot is, or are the boxes on the forest plots. The boxes on a forest plot represent the individual trials within a meta-analysis. So one, two, three, four. So here are the four trials. The first thing you look at in the box is the size of the box. Now, the bigger the box uh, means the bigger the power. The bigger the power means essentially the larger the number of patients involved in that trial. So study four here has the the highest power because it has the biggest box, i.e. the biggest number of patients in that trial, whereas trial two would be the least power, so the smallest box, so the smallest number of patients in that trial. So number one, you look at the size of the box. Number two, you look at how far does the, or where does the box sit um, as per the the change in blood pressure or change in potassium or change in cholesterol, you know, depending on what you're looking at. So where does it sit on the line? So for example, and that represents the average change in blood pressure in that particular trial. So for example, um, studies four and studies one show the average patient in that trial had a drop in blood pressure of about 20. The uh, average patient or the average drop in blood pressure of the patients in trial three was about 32 whereas in trial number two actually the average blood pressure in those patients went up by about 20 when they used that new medication so the second thing to look at in the boxes is where does the box lie um, as per the as per the zero here um, how much change did it show the third thing you look at in the box is the line that goes through the box here so the line that goes through the box here represents the confidence interval of that particular trial. So we'll try and get another video in somewhere about confidence intervals. We'll certainly talk about them in more detail in our main stats online course, but in very simple terms, you want that line to be as small or, or as narrow, not as narrow, as um, least width as possible, um, because the larger the confidence interval, the, the, the worse really. So you want it to be as small as you can. So um, for example, the confidence interval, which is shortest here is in study one, whereas the confidence interval in study four is the largest. So the third thing you look at is a line that goes through. And the fourth thing you look at when it comes to, which moves out of the way, the fourth thing you, you look at when it comes to the box is does the box or the line that goes through it touch the line of zero or not? So if any part of this touches the line of zero, then it means that that particular study or trial is insignificant. Okay, that particular study or trial is insignificant. So this trial is insignificant because that line touches the line of zero, but all the other three trials are significant. Doesn't matter which side of the line of zero it is. Um, it just, so this is a significant trial, for example. It's just that it shows positive. It shows that the blood pressure goes up. These two are significant, but it shows the blood pressure goes down. This is insignificant, but it still shows that the blood pressure on average went down. So that's the boxes. The next thing you look at then is the diamond. So you'll get a single diamond um, in a forest plot and, and take the diamond as basically an average of all the trials, an average of all the boxes. That's where the di that's what the diamond is representing. So there's a couple of things to look at in terms of the diamond, just like there's a couple of things to look at in terms of the boxes. So the first thing you look at in the diamond is where does the diamond sit as per the line of zero? So um, here you can see that it sits around about here. So all four trials put together, um, the average blood pressure drop was about 10. So a drop in blood pressure of 10 was the average um, as per all four trials. The second thing you look at in a diamond is the width of the diamond. Now, you can see there's no lines that go through a diamond like there is in a box. So the confidence interval of the of all the trials together, in essence, is demonstrated by the width of that diamond. So ideally, you want that diamond to be as narrow as possible, as opposed to a really wide diamond, which is not great because you want the confidence interval to be as narrow as possible. So the second thing you look at is the width of the diamond. The third thing you look at is whether the diamond touches the line of zero. If the diamond 
touches that line of zero, then the whole meta-analysis is insignificant. The whole thing becomes insignificant if that diamond touches the line of zero. You can have insignificant trials, but the diamond is okay. So in this instance, we do have an insignificant trial here, but the overall result, the overall meta-analysis is fine because the diamond doesn't touch that line of zero. So four things to look at when it comes to boxes, three things to look at when it comes to the diamond. Let's go back to the question then and show why the answer is what it is. So the incorrectly matched um, option is D. So D is saying that the, the insignificant trial is trial two, i.e. this one. That's a false statement, isn't it? Because as we just learned, the insignificance or significance is not determined by which side it is. Um, and let me know if you put that because you thought it was insignificant because it was on this side. Um, this is the insignificant trial, like we mentioned, because it touches the line of zero. This is significant, but just shows that the blood pressure went up on average. So all the others are true. Largest confidence interval is trial four, like we mentioned. That's the line that goes through the box. Average BP drop is less than 10. So the average BP is the, looking at the diamond here, and the average drop is about minus 10. The third least powerful trial is trial one. So this is the most, this is the least powerful trial. This is the second least, and this is the third least because it goes up in size, and therefore that's a true statement. And then E, the biggest change in blood pressure is in trial three. So the blood pressure in trial three on average, like we said, went down by about 32, and that shows the biggest change in zero. If this was here, then this would still be the biggest change in blood pressure. It doesn't talk about whether it's negative or positive. It's just which one is furthest from that line of zero. So option D is the correct answer because it's an incorrect statement. So well done if you got that right. If you do struggle with stats, and I, I know I did, um, and, and if you do want a more simplified, principle-based course that focuses on all the key things you need to know, then our AKT Superstats online course is for you. It's a two-hour course. Um, it covers basically all of the bits that people often struggle when it comes to stats from ground level upwards. So you can see the kind of things that we cover. Um, forest plots is in there alongside all the other graphs. And like I said, all the, the baseline graphs, as long as you get those right, you can work out pretty much um, most of the other types of graphs that are going to come, all the calculations, um, all the equations you need to know, but also all the theory around stats that you need to know from the curriculum point of view. So um, things like hazard ratios and errors and bias and randomization and all those kind of things that, um, you know, when it comes to stats, people focus on equations and graphs and you do have to get that bit right. But we often don't look at the other bits that actually can be um, really useful to get you some nice, easy marks. So um, to our course, you can watch it as many times as you like, one, three, six or 12 month options as with all of our online courses. If you do get it, don't forget to use the coupon Aurora Video 10 to get that 10% off. Um, this coupon can be used across all of our AKT resources, whether it's online courses, audio courses, uh, live courses, uh, mock exams, flashcards, AKT poster, um, and the AKT Goal Package. And I know a lot of you have used that if you're doing the next exam, not the one that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. But hopefully this has been of some value. Hopefully forest plots are now not as much of a mystery as they perhaps used to be. If you knew forest plots already and this helped to reinforce things, and I'm glad for you as well, please do comment down below um, how you found this video. And if you know of any of the colleagues that might find these countdown videos of some use, please let me know. We'll be back tomorrow for day 11 with another clinical video. Hashtag Campus World Pass, hashtag I went with Aurora. See you tomorrow.